From her course, The Power of Mind Over Body, Jo Marchant states, the emotion of awe is a feeling we get when we encounter something so vast that we feel dwarfed. By the end of this video, I think you'll be convinced that arranging to experience this feeling regularly is a very good plan. Science demonstrates that our genetic expression is affected by this powerful emotion. Genetic expression is when our genome kicks in to making various proteins. We will see that experiencing awe helps us to live better and longer and contributes to making our world a better place. Tall order, but it's true. Awe isn't the same as wonder. Wonder is more scientific, something we try to understand. Awe defies words and reasoning. We relinquish an urge to explain. We surrender to the vastness and mystery of our experience. Feelings of awe can also bring us to the verge of fear. I feel that threshold when I gaze into space. Jo Marchant is a journalist who has a PhD in genetics and also medical microbiology. I find her subject fascinating. Much of what follows is from her course. The experience of awe connects us with a meaning greater than ourselves. Greek astronomer Ptolemy said that the infinite stars overhead made him forget about his mortality. Novelist John Steinbeck stood at the bottom of giant California redwoods. He wrote, They leave a mark or create a vision that stays with you always. From them comes a silence and awe. Awe can result from something physical like a storm or magnificent waterfalls. I think childbirth is a perfect example. Awe can also be conceptual, like understanding the interconnectedness of nature or the virtuosity of a symphony. With awe, we can experience a sense of well-being, a type of happiness. Research shows that the avenue to this sense of well-being matters to our biology. Steve Cole, a UCLA professor, studied the effect of well-being on the human genome. They looked at hedonic well-being, which results from material pleasures like shopping or sex, and compared it with eudaimonic well-being, which is derived from activities with a greater meaning or purpose, like art or music or serving others. The results were fascinating. People with eudaimonic well-being had a decrease in expression of genes related to inflammation. They also had less stress regarding threats to personal well-being. The idea is that if we die, the things we care about live on. Also, everyday stresses were diffused. Having a broader view of the world and universe or a higher purpose helps put our own lives in perspective and we are less threatened by our own mortality. I like that. Psychologists can induce awe by showing endless starry skies or vast landscapes. They have also used huge dinosaur skeletons or massive trees to elicit this emotion. One study showed that this emotion could produce increased creativity, curiosity, interest in abstract paintings, and improved focus and memory, not to mention happiness. Experimental participants could remember the details of a short story better than the control group. They also persisted longer on difficult puzzles and wrote more original answers on tests. Their happiness was increased and their stress levels were decreased for weeks. They also experienced a sense of having more time. Mm. <laughs> their perspective changed. They drew themselves smaller and wrote their signatures smaller. 
Having less inflammation and more parasympathetic nervous system activity demonstrated a change in their biology. The parasympathetic nervous system is a branch of our autonomic nervous system that regulates rest and digestion. It is opposed to the sympathetic nervous system that provides our fight or flight responses. Feeling awe provided more of these positive responses than when other happy emotions were studied, like contentment, pride, or joy. Brain scans indicated that internal dialogue of thought was dialed down and that perspective was forced away from self and daily concerns toward a bigger picture. The experimental group, or awe experiencers, felt more connected to others, were more generous, had an increased concern for the planet and a decreased concern about money. Their focus on others over self increased and they were more willing to help a stranger. The awe researchers believe that there is such thing as an awe deficit. When there is a deficit, people become more selfish, narcissistic, and intolerant of others. I think this is a very important point because we live in a world now where people are often more connected to a screen on their phone than to experiences in nature. Online, on TV, and in society, I see the constant focus on beauty, fitness, and having material things right away. Of course, healthy body habits are good, but I'm talking about the push to be ripped or have the perfect lashes, eyebrows, or skin. Men and women are pushed to have bodies of a certain ideal shape. These are the symbols of hedonic well-being. This type of pursuit does not help our mental outlook or our biology. Here is our easy solution to help our society become more caring and improve our own health. We can simply seek out awe. Consider for yourself and your family these avenues to experiencing awe. The first one is religious belief. Numerous studies have shown that churchgoers live longer. I'm not talking a little bit longer, but significantly longer. Depending on the study, five plus to nine plus years longer. Churches connect people to a greater whole and greater meaning. The genetic connection I have shared offers some explanation of these findings. Pretty interesting. Any kind of spiritual or transcendent experience can bring awe. Getting out into nature is a conduit to awe that all of us can embrace. Psychedelic drugs like psilocybin can fast track people to an extreme sense of awe. I talk about my own experience with psilocybin in the four part series on my channel called A Doctor's Psilocybin Journey. The most recent research I read about psychedelics highlighted how we in the field of psychiatry have long focused on negative symptoms of depression, such as lack of appetite or insomnia, but not on what patients often care most about, a sense of purpose and a sense of connection with others. In the area of meaning, purpose, and connectedness, the psychedelics, specifically psilocybin in this study, did better than the widely used antidepressant escitalopram, aka Lexapro. For negative symptoms only, like lack of appetite or insomnia, the two treatments, psilocybin or escitalopram, were equally effective. Psychedelic drugs have been shown to decrease anxiety, depression, addiction, and to weaken negative mindsets resulting from chronic stress, loneliness, or some sort of decline. They are frequently reported to increase a sense of connectivity, purpose, and meaning. In my case, at a high but known dose of psilocybin, I certainly did experience awe. It is an experience that I will not forget. I talk about how it helped me in the series that I mentioned. A study done in 2020 with 60 adults demonstrated how a simple routine change could be very powerful. 
participants were asked to take a walk outside for 15 minutes a day. Half of the group had no specific instruction. The other half was asked to keep an outward focus on nature, bugs, flowers, just not on themselves. They were also asked to take pictures on their walks. The experimental group, the one asked to focus outward rather than inward, experienced increased joy and feelings of connection with others, even though they were alone on their walks. Also, their faces looked less stressed. Their daily photos included themselves less and less, and instead focused on outer things. Their photos showed them to have bigger and bigger smiles over time. When asked about thoughts, the control group thought about things like their vacation or someone they were going to go meet up with, while the experimental group got more and more present with things like the colors around them or the springy feel of the fall ground. In conclusion, science offers us the gift of explanation while awe offers us a way of connecting with mystery, gaining perspective, and finding the truly important. As you finish your day or begin a new one, I encourage you to seek out experiences in life that bring you right to the end of yourself and help you peer beyond. Empowered thought requires going beyond ourselves. So as you might guess, I'm a fan. I'm also a big fan of Amazing You and your journey toward brighter light.